mm -hmm. far as quarterbacks, black quarterbacks in the NFL, there's always been this special line in the sand that gets moved around mm -hmm. uh, throughout their careers. But it's it's in like it's not just in sports; it's in society too, man. Life when you start moving up. Like first of all, like I yeah. was told when I was coming up, I've been told uh, when I was in a place, do you want to be a sportscaster? You want to be a black sportscaster? So I'm like, well. I want to be a sportscaster, but um, damn, I'm black. I mean, like, what, what the hell does that mean? Yo, this is the Inflection Collective. All of us are connected, reflective, real life perspective, respected. The banter, the shit chat, no cap, it's big facts, so kick back. This here is done there, been there. Uh, Lamar Jackson, uh, this guy has been incredible. He's a quarterback of the Baltimore Ravens. He has been having an exceptional season, so much so that he is the front runner right now for to win his second most valuable player uh, uh, award in the NFL this year, one of a couple of years ago. Uh, and the way the season started, you know, there's a lot of people, he tried to get a new contract. Ravens didn't seem like they wanted to give an extension. Other teams seemed like they weren't interested. Now I'm pretty sure a lot of the teams out there kicking themselves. But still, as good as a quarterback as he's been, uh, as good as he was uh, at the University of Louisville winning the Heisman Trophy, as good as he was uh, coming into the NFL and winning the MVP award, there are still idiots out there that still want to put, speaking of labels, of Lamar Jackson because he is a he's not the prototypical pocket quarterback, but he is a hybrid, a, a new definition of what the quarterback can be. They don't want to give him his props. So there is somebody, I don't even know this guy's name, I wouldn't mention if I did. He's on Fox Sports Radio, which I've done for Fox Sports Radio. I work for Fox, so he could be a colleague of mine, and I tell him to his face. That says, I don't like him as a quarterback. I don't, I want my, he's, he's quarterback. He's not quarterbacky enough, whatever the F that means. Quarterback. That means he's enough. not white. Well, it means that he's, it, it, he's not white, which we can take the racial overtones. I think there are racial tropes that are thrown out there and whatnot when it comes to athletic, because he's too athletic. Those are some of the tropes. That means some he's, of the, black. he's black. He's <laughs> black. But, but Baker Mayfield's a little athletic too now. I'm just saying. But you know, but we 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 get it. We ain't naive enough. But he's too. But you cool. also seen Baker Baker Mayfield doing the Dougie doing too the on the Dougie. sideline. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> he's doing the Dougie. So like, so he's been around us enough that we give him like a half of a card, not a full card. Exactly. He's that. invited to the cookout. He yeah. can come to the cookout. <laughs> he gotta bring something and it can't be potato salad with, with raisins <laughs> in it. You know, or can't he loses his card. He can't. So <laughs> so we hear these tropes about how a uh, person who is in this 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 system or uh, in a position the way it used to be, and if people evolve, then all of a sudden there's a problem. One thing about black folks is that we will take something that somebody gives us that we see somebody else doing, and we're gonna put some stank on it. Whether it's the national anthem, or whether it's line dancing, whether, whatever it is, we're gonna put a little stank on it, and everybody's not gonna like it. But guess what? They wish they could do it. And that is the problem when it comes to Lamar Jackson. This guy, whoever his quarterback is, he wishes that they had the same athletic ability that Lamar Jackson has. But because they don't, they always feel like they got to bring somebody down or put words or phrases or all these different titles on somebody to try and make them feel less than who they are. You know, it's crazy that with sports, you know, um, and, and we talk about sports uh, as a starting point for this podcast, done there been that, but it's a microcosm of society. And so it's about the issues that all of us are talking about. Uh, you know, race in America is one of the things that people hate to talk about, but the undercurrent of pretty much 99.99% .99 of anything happening in America is related to race. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's, it's harmful for white people too. Racism harms white people as well. But as mm -hmm. far as quarterbacks, black quarterbacks in the NFL. There's always been this special line in the sand that gets moved around mm -hmm. uh, throughout their careers. I remember growing up, it was Warren Moon and uh, Doug Williams. And, you know, the questions about, you know, how does it feel to be a successful black quarterback? Look, I've only been a successful quarterback. Like, I wouldn't know what it feels like to be anything else. Yep. And the way that Black quarterbacks from high school to college are often moved to receiver or, or change positions or how many times, you know, black quarterbacks have to hear they're athletic and not intelligent. Jalen Milrow and how many of Alabama. Times. All of Jalen Milrow, but all of them, all yeah. of them. They have to hear about how, okay, just because they are athletic, it's a team of 
athletes. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's a given. So when they say, oh, he's an athlete to me, that's a great condescension. It's a great uh, offense. He is an intelligent quarterback steering this team to wins and success. And that's across the board. So whether it's Tom Brady, whether it's Baker, whether it's Peyton Manning, whoever it is, they are all great athletes. Do not minimize a black quarterback by saying, boy, he's athletic. Everybody out there is athletic. Every quarterback that ever played, every running back, every defensive line, they're athletic. They're athletes, literally for a living. Um, and so what's crazy is it's almost like it's very equivalent to, um, you know, there's this sense of audacity on both ends that you see when you see certain people exceed and excel. Lamar Jackson being a great example of someone whether it's uh, his mom helping negotiate his kind, you know, just all the things he did it his way. And so how does he have the audacity mm -hmm. to be great? How do you have the audacity to succeed? And I think when you see certain people of a certain race exceed expectations that they never put on themselves is what the world put on them. You know, unfortunately uh, they feel you are too audacious. The, the Williams sisters got it. They are who are, who, da how dare they tiger yeah. woods? How dare you yeah. succeed and be great and dance and sing and celebrate and speak multiple languages and, and set the bar so high. Simone Biles, how dare you use those moves in competition? We're going to deduct points from your routine because nobody else can even try to do it. How right. dare you? Yes. Great Keep it moving. No, you, you're you're absolutely right. Everything you're saying, man, I'm you're spitting some bars right now because that's and exactly it's all it's old is. news, right? It's it old is. news. How how dare you? It how is. Dare it's, you? it's but it's it's in like it's not just in sports. It's in society too, man. Life. When you start moving up. Like first of all, like I yeah. was told when I was coming up, not that I was a good sportscaster. I've been told first of all, I've been told uh, when I was in a place, like, do you want to be a sportscaster? Or you want to be a black sportscaster. <laughs> Not a, so do you want to be a sportscaster or do you want to be a black sportscaster? I'm like, well, I want to be a sportscaster, but I'm damn, I'm black. I mean, like, what what the hell does that mean? Right. I've also mm -hmm. been told that, uh, well, Mike, you're you're going to move up and you're going to they, I've been told I was going to go to ESPN when I was in Fresno and Hagerstown, Maryland. I've been saying and not because of how good I was uh, or the potential that I had, uh, but I was going to be in a top 10 a network market because you're black. Been told that now I don't listen to that book. I don't pay attention to it or whatever and stuff like that. But you hear that and you hear how they try to, a lot of people try to uh, uh, bring you down a notch because they feel like you're given something instead of it being earned or because you got a special set of skills or you're, you're and a lot of people hate on you. And this is in general, not just in a racial standpoint. Haters come from people that aren't doing better for you, better than you for the most part. Because they can't do what you're doing. So because they can't do what you're doing, they have to find a reason to bring you down. Right. You ain't never met a hater that's doing better than you. So they got to find something negative about what you're doing. That's so great because they can't reach the level at which you are. So instead of trying to strive to be what you are or reach that level in their own way, the better thing for them to do is. And the easiest thing for them to do is let me snatch him off his pedestal a little bit more. And the other end of the hating spectrum is if somebody is doing something better than you and they see you coming up and you're doing something great or wonderful, or whatever. Guess what? There's a threat. There's a threat that you've had, Eunice, as a comedian coming up right now. There's a threat that I've had as a sportscaster or as a TV host. When I said that I wanted to move from sports and to get into news and entertainment. I had my own people telling me stuff that, hey, well, you sure just they want to kind of keep you in that lane. They want to keep you this stay over there. Don't do this because there's not enough room over there. And that's the problem that I have. It's like allow people to grow, allow people to expand just because it was done away years ago. Doesn't mean that it's not going to be done a different way now. Even when it comes to comedy units, you know this as well as I do. A lot of the comics out there and I'm not saying any names, whatever. They get mad at the Internet people, the social media. People, the DC young flies, or whatnot, or whatnot, because oh, that's not well. It's, it's it's an expansion, man. Kodak was the only film company for many years, and now everybody got a camera phone. Everybody and I, and I think and I think that's the biggest thing is that you said uh, it's a threat. I can't tell you since I moved to Los Angeles uh, almost a year ago how many white 
male comedians have told me, oh, well, you're going to have an easier time because you're a black woman. No one's checking for us anymore. And and being a black woman in America, I've never had an easier time doing anything, any list <laughs> that they have. Being a black woman in America, I'm not at the top of no list of easy. And so what it is, is like, listen, there, there's not a, there's not a market where you're not going to be. And actually one of the people who told me that I opened for them, he's a huge name. I won't say his name, but I opened for him. He's huge. And he says, Oh, well, it's going to probably work out for you because you know, you're a black woman. You gave me at the right time. Now that could also be true. Right. I can also say, hey, more black people are getting more opportunities. More women are getting opportunities. We're looking at the Issa Rays and the Quinta Brunsons and the Natasha Rothwells and the Lena Waifs and the, you know, and the Robin Thedes. We can call out names of people, the Ava DuVernay's, the Shonda, the Oprah's. We used to only had, we only had Oprah, right? So mm -hmm. yes, that means we're moving in the right directions. But then guess what? You'll have the same conversation. They're still getting paid less. They're still being challenged more. They're still having to do twice and three and four times the work. They're still not getting the same opportunities, the same credit. You know, so let's go. What are we talking about? And so it's unfortunate because it is one of those things where how the, the how dare you of it all is because the only way supremacy, white supremacy works is based on a concept that. I have to believe I'm better than you because I can't prove it. People don't realize when you put these labels on people like Lamar Jackson, you are taking away from his accomplishments and everything, all that hard ass work that he's put in on that football field to be the person he is. So please, I know this ain't the segment. Stop that. Stop it. Stop that. Okay. I'm sorry. Listen, what's so crazy is for black folks, or I'll speak as a black woman, to be two of the most, well, I'm, I'm going to put in a poor black woman, an unwealthy American. A lot of things that would, would be seen as negatives, right, in this country. It's crazy how most black people wouldn't trade places with a non black person for anything in the world. <laughs> Black people, we love being black, though. That's the thing. We would still rather yep. be oppressed, live here, deal with all the stuff we the, the black tax we have to deal with, the emotional labor we have to carry all day that is never spoken about, that's never addressed, that's never accounted for. Yep. All the things I would sign up to be this black woman I, in I, every I, lifetime. I would, every, I, I, we know only th see that's what people don't understand. It's not that we nobody hates white people or other races or this. We don't want to be given more than anybody else. We just want to be given what we deserve to have. It's equal. And the word, the word shouldn't even be given. Just leave us alone. Let everybody no. do what they're going to do. No, just let no, everybody do no. what they're going to do. If you work should, hard, you, you reap should, the benefits. Or you should get what you earn, right? Yeah. And, and it's like it. nobody, nobody wants to be given it. So if you need to make up for past ilks of being put down, and we can talk, we can go uh, down a rabbit hole of racism and, 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 and the taxes and, and how they stopped us from voting and all that type of stuff like that and redlining. And we can go through all the history of racism and talk about the reasons why we're still behind the eight ball. Everybody, they know this. We know this and everything like that. But all we want now, we want equality. And that's all we've ever preached, man. As black people, as people of color, minorities, whatever, the LGBT, you can, man, just treat me equally. That's all we're asking for. And if you can't- And if you're a quarterback- that, in the NFL, just let me be the quarterback in the NFL. And yeah, if I'm a great quarterback in the NFL, just talk about how great of a quarterback I am in the NFL. Mm -hmm. Not because I ain't doing it like your quarterback. Or or you he ain't got to call me nothing but the name my mom and daddy gave me, the mm -hmm. name that's on my jersey, and, and sign them checks. That's it. Sign them checks. <laughs> <laughs>